Hi, I'm Candace from Sewing Machines Plus, and this is our new owner's class, Sewing Machines. This class is designed to teach you all you need to know about your brand new sewing machine. In this class, you will learn all about needles and threads, cleaning your machine and some basic maintenance, winding a bobbin, and threading your machine. We'll also identify a few different types of machines and talk about some of the basic feet that come with most machines. We will sew up a little zipper bag and use our zipper foot, and we'll also learn how to put on a button with the buttonhole foot. Then we'll end by talking about some helpful tools Tools every sewist needs. So grab your machine and your manual and let's get started. So needles are very important and let's show you how to read a pack of needles. So there's all different types of needles. This one here is a top stitch needle, a Microtex needle or a sharp needle, or a denim needle. So those are the different types. Then you have different sizes. So the size is down here. An 8012 is for a medium weight fabric. A 9014 is for a little bit heavier fabric. And then again, an 8012 is probably the standard needle that you will use. So needles come in types and sizes, and you need to choose the one for your project. So this slide really shows you a close-up view of the different types of needles. You can see the universal needle has somewhat of a rounded tip, but it looks also sharp. So this one can be used for a variety of fabrics. The Jersey ball needle is perfect for all of your knits. So this is meant to go through the fibers of your knits without puncturing and making a hole in your knits. So you want to use a jersey or ball needle when sewing knit fabric. A stretch needle is just a little more elongated and that is meant to not puncture the elastic that runs through super stretch fabrics such as ITY or swim fabrics or performance fabrics, things that have a lot of lycra or a lot of nylon. It's good to use a stretch needle for that type of a fabric. The jeans needle is very sharp and very strong. It's meant to puncture all three threads that run through those types of fabric. You have a warp and a weft, and then you have the white thread that runs through your jeans fabric. So you need a stronger, sharp needle to puncture all of those different types of weaves in that fabric. A Microtex or sharp needle is probably the one that you will use the most. It is meant for all of your cotton or woven fabrics. Your embroidery needles and your quilting needles are also sharp. But this just shows you a little better view of these different types of needles. And you can see why you will need different types for your different fabrics or your different threads. The other thing that you really need to know about needles is to get the correct size for your machine. A standard sewing machine uses a 130 or a 705 needle. These needles are for long arm machines or industrial machines. So you don't want to grab one of these types of needles. Again, stick with the 130 or 705 needles for your standard sewing machines. So one of the first tools you need when you're sewing is lots of different types of needles. Needles are extremely important and you want to buy lots of them and change them often. Anytime you have a problem with your machine, the first thing you want to do is always change out your needles. So again, buy lots of needles and change them often. So one of the most important things when you're sewing is to buy good quality thread. If you have thread from your grandmother or your mother that they've given you over the years or Walmart, two for a dollar, 
These are threads that you do not want to use. These are threads that you want to go ahead and put on the mantle and look at, but don't put them in your sewing machine. They will break and they will cause problems. You want to buy a good quality thread that's nice and strong and made for sewing machines. There's all different types of threads you can use that are made out of different fibers. So you have rayon thread, polyester, cotton, and they're great for different projects. You also have fun threads like glow in the dark. You have threads that will disappear when you sew on them, monofilament threads. And you have embroidery threads, quilting threads, variegated threads, all kinds of fun threads to use with your projects. If you're doing any twin needle work, you want to use an external spool stand. So this is, you need two spools of thread to do twin needle work. If you don't have a second pin to hold a spool of thread, go ahead and get a spool stand that is external. And you can just sit it next to your machine. This is also great to use for threads that need to come off vertically. And most of those are on cones. So definitely get one of these. They're a lot of fun to play with. The other thing that is important is using the right spool cap for your thread. The rule of thumb is to find the cap that closely matches the size of your thread. So for this spool cap, I would be using this size thread. For the larger ones, you can use for the larger threads. Now some machines come with many and some machines only come with one or two. This little tiny one is for this type of a thread, a cone thread, and that just sits down in there to help hold it into place. So the most important thing is to use the right spool cap with your thread and use the best thread that you can find for your project. So when it comes to machine maintenance, my suggestion is always to read your manual. Every machine is a little bit different. You'll probably need some good oil and an excellent brush to clean your machine out every day. But there's sometimes when you're gonna to want to take off the bobbin case, and you'll do that by taking off any accessory table, and then taking off your bobbin cover, you're gonna clean in here. Some of you can take off this presser plate and you'll want to get a good screwdriver or something small to actually get in here and physically take this off. Then you can take everything out and get a really good cleaning on your machine. You can also use something like this. This is a vacuum attachment, kind of like what you would use for your keyboard on a computer. It will get in all the little cracks and crevices and clean out your sewing machine. According to our technicians, they do not recommend canned air. So don't use canned air, that is wet air. Use something like this, a nice little vacuum attachment or a good synthetic brush and keep your machine clean. You'll be surprised how much lint will build up on your machine. So let's take a look at this machine it has a plastic cover and it comes off just a little differently. Plus, let's talk about cleaning and oiling our bobbin case. So first, let's take off our accessories tray. With this one, there's a small little notch right here and I just push on it. This will come right off. So now let's take out our bobbin and we're gonna take out our bobbin case. Sometimes they're a little tricky to get out. So this comes completely out. This is a good time to check your bobbin case for any damage, nicks, or needle punctures. You want to get in here and clean all of this area, including these side areas. Perfect time to use the vacuum. This is machine oil, and you want one drop right here in the center. 
To put this back in, see the little white arrow? That has to line up with the white dot. So you can see the two white dots are lined up. This way you can tell the bobbin is in correctly. You can also add one drop of oil right here to your bobbin case. So clean it often and that will definitely save you service and maintenance. So when we're talking about bobbins, make sure you buy the correct bobbin for your machine. Each bobbin has a little bit different size, width, and shape. You want to make sure, again, to buy the correct ones for your machine. All bobbins are different. Some are universal and can be used in many machines, but some machines take a very specific bobbin. So look in your owner's manual and see which one you need. So let's talk about winding your bobbin. Almost all machines wind a bobbin in a very similar way. If you look on the top of the machine, you'll see dotted lines, and that is the path you're going to take to wind the bobbin. So on this machine, I will wind the bobbin to here. And you'll put the bobbin on, and um, then we're going to either turn, move this button or this button to activate the bobbin winding mechanism. My suggestion is always to slow down and wind your bobbins slowly. I know it takes a little bit more time, but you will get a better result by going slow. Okay, so we're going to put our bobbin on and you're going to wrap your thread around the bobbin a couple times or you can also use there's some holes in here that you can put the thread through to hold it into place before you wind your bobbin so i just kind of wind it up and then i'm going to activate it by pushing it over and i hold on to the tail and then i'm going to start winding And you want to make sure that it's going to fill the bobbin evenly. As I mentioned before, it's good to slow it down. Now most machines will stop when the bobbin is full, but you can stop it before that if you don't need to fill a full bobbin. Deactivate it. Cut your thread and you're ready to insert your bobbin. To insert your bobbin, go ahead and look at the picture on the top of your case and it will show you the direction to put your bobbin in. Most of the time it's going to be similar to the letter P. So I have a circle on one side and my tail on the other and I'll just open the case and put the bobbin right in. I'll follow the path for the tail of my thread Every machine's a little different. Then I'll put my case back on and I'm ready to go. So let's talk about threading your machine. The most important thing before you start threading your machine is to make sure you put your presser foot up. When you put your presser foot up, you open up all the tension discs throughout the threading path. So that's extremely important. The next thing you'll do is follow the numbers indicated on your machine. If you have a question about what path to follow, definitely look at your user manual. Okay, let's get started. Before you begin threading, make sure your presser foot's up and make sure the needle is up in the highest position. Then just follow the path. One, two, three, four, and then we'll thread the needle. So to use the needle threader, this specific one, you push it down and then you're going to put your thread across and under the needle threader and pull it through. 
So if you have a needle threader on your machine, consider yourself lucky. Now one tip is when you unthread or change your thread, you're going to want to cut it from the top and pull it through. You do not want to pull your thread out the other way. There's a little spring down in here that could get caught. So always cut your thread and pull it out. So there are basically two types of machines. You have a manual machine with manual dials, and you have a computerized machine that normally has a screen. So we're gonna talk about these individually and discuss changing the tension, adjusting the stitch length and width, and using some decorative stitches. So let's get started. So for a manual machine, you'll just have to read the dials for your specific machine. Up here is my width control to adjust the width of some of my decorative stitches. This is my needle tension. So this will I will adjust for the needle tension. I have a back presser so I can sew in reverse. So to change the stitch, I just find the one I want and change the stitch selector. Then if I need to, I can adjust my width and my length. Now these stitches, most machines you'll see are in a different color. Sometimes they're blue in this machine, they're purple. These are called stretch stitches. And to get to these stitches, I have to turn my dial to the S, SS for stretch stitches. Now this will activate a stretch function and I can use whatever number correlates with that stitch. So this is a little computerized machine. You'll see they have a little window. On this little Gen Genomi Magnolia machine, I can change my stitch first by changing my number. So I use my plus and minus to scroll through my different stitches. Then I'll hit that again, and now I'm changing my width. So I'll plus and minus my width. And I hit it again, and now I'm changing my length. So this type of machine, that is the way you will scroll through the different selection of stitches. This machine also tells me which foot to use. So for these stitches, I'll use an A foot, or an R foot, or F foot. Different machines use different feet for those stitches. This has a speed control. I love speed control, but for most of us, we want to slow, slow it down when we sew. So it's nice to be able to control that. This machine also has several front panel buttons. It has a start stop. And to activate this option, you have to remove the foot control. So most machines, <laughs> Wrong one. You have to remove the foot control. And now I can use the start stop button. This has a reverse stitch, a tie off stitch, and this one is your needle up and down. Again, on controlling your thread tension, it is right here. So this machine has everything very easily accessible and all the information right on the front of the machine. So now let's take a look at this little computerized machine. This machine is very similar to many machines on the market. You have a nice screen and quite a few options. On the front of the machine, you'll see that we have the start stop button. If we want to utilize this button, we cannot have the foot plugged in, the foot pedal. So unplug the foot pedal and then you can use the start stop button. This is your reverse button or your reinforcement button, your tie off and end of sequence button. Your needle up, needle down, scissors, which will cut your thread and your speed control. The front panel has all of your most used stitches right here for easy access. When I want to use my front panel, this is highlighted. And all I have to do is select a stitch and it will automatically go to that stitch. 
From here, I can change my length and my width just by using my plus and minus and my up and down arrows. In this mode, I can just change stitches very easily. This also tells me what foot I should be using. It tells me that my needle position is down, so when I stop sewing, my needle will stop in the down position. A few other things on this panel. I can pre-program my reinforcement stitch and my scissors. So when I stop my seam or my stitch and I push the reverse button, it will do a reinforcement stitch and it will cut my threads automatically. Most machines will also allow you to go into the settings of the machine. Here on most Baby Lock and Brother machines, it's a piece of paper and that takes me into my settings. Here I use my arrows to scroll through my settings and I have eight pages of different settings I can make to this machine. When I want to get out of this screen, I just hit OK, or I also have a reverse button or a back button that I could push. This machine comes with a lot of different stitches, and you can find that information on the inside panel. So here, there are many stitches to choose from. If I want to select this stitch, number 08, I find the corresponding icon and select that stitch. And a lot of times it'll say, is it okay to cancel your last stitch? Yes, that just cancels it off my screen. I'll hit that again, now I'm in number two, and I select 08. Now I have all these cute hearts. You can see some stitches do not allow you to change the width and the length. They are preset and you can only change width and length if it allows you to. But one thing I can do is I can do a mirror image and I can do a sequence. So let's select a different stitch. I'm gonna go to zero 05. You can see that now I have a heart and another stitch. And I could put another stitch in now I have a whole sequence of stitches. If I select the heart with the slash two hearts, this is one stitch or a continuous stitch. So now it will repeat the pattern. A really fun way to select different type of stitches and make a really fun pattern. I'm going to hit OK. And if I want to save this stitch, I can hit my memory. And this machine will allow me to save it right to my memory. Now when I come back and I want to do that stitch again, I can just pull it up from my memory. I'm going to hit my back stitch, and that will just delete everything I was working on. This machine also has alphanumeric characters. So you could type in a name, happy birthday, Valentine's Day, and really customize any project. So let's type in a name. We like to type in a short name, so we're going to type in Deb. So it's 0405 and 02. I can now stitch out a name, or I could add some decorative stitches. So these machines are very easy to use, easy to navigate with this type of a screen, and a lot of fun. So let's take a couple minutes and talk about the different feet that might come with your machine. As you can see, there are many different ones to choose from. So let's get started. So your feet might have come in a nice little bag that is in your accessories compartment and there's all the different feet in here. Or you might have gotten something that looks like this that has the feet individually labeled and stored also in your accessories bin. 
If you didn't get a foot that you really, really want, you can always purchase an additional foot if it didn't come with your machine. Let's look at these feet individually because they are really handy to have. Most machines come with a zipper foot. Now this is your standard J foot. It's also called a zigzag foot. You'll notice it has a little black button right here on the side. This is a really nice feature most people don't know about. You push it in and it will lock as you go over a hump or a seam. This way you won't skip stitches when you're coming over that hump. This foot is very nice. This one is an N foot or a monogram foot. It's used for most decorative stitches. Your quarter inch foot, they come in all different types. This one has a circle in the middle. That means it's only to be used for straight stitching. So be careful when you're using that one. Now this foot is an overcast foot. It's used to put a zigzag stitch on the edge of your fabric. This one is an open toe foot. It's used for quilting. It's similar to what you would use on an embroidery machine to do free motion quilting. You'll drop the feed dogs on your machine and use this foot for all your free motion work. Now this machine comes with a buttonhole foot and most machines come with some version of this foot and a button foot. This one is a walking foot but not all machines come with a walking foot. It's very handy if you're doing multiple layers of fabric. It helps to feed the fabric evenly on the top and the bottom, and most people find it is a must foot to have. So let's start sewing. The first thing we're gonna do is practice using our zipper foot. And what we're gonna do is make a cute little bag that has a zipper and some decorative stitches. So I recommend just doing a bunch of decorative stitches, using a piece of interfacing or stabilizer under those decorative stitches is really nice. And then we'll put in our zipper. This is a very fast project and very easy to do. So let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is put our zipper foot on. Most machines have an easy release button back here. Just pop that off, take off your foot, and we're gonna put the zipper foot on. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our piece of fabric with our decorative stitches, and we're gonna put right sides together with our zipper. Now you can see this is extra long, and I suggest doing it this way. It's so much easier just to cut off your zippers. This is a plastic zipper, so it will easily go over your, your needle will go right through it. So I'm going to put the right sides together. And you can pin or use clips. Now we're going to stitch this right along the zipper teeth. I do suggest when you first start to manually make sure you have your needle and your foot in the right place. Now we're gonna sew along the zipper. We are using a straight stitch. So I have sewn this and when I open it, you can see the right sides are together. Now let's put the other piece on. So now I'm gonna place my next piece right sides down. I'll flatten that out and I'll put it over the top. Okay, kind of lining it up. And I will again clip here. We will stitch, same as we did before, along the stitch line of the zipper teeth.
Now you can see when I open it up, I've got everything on the correct side. And now I'm going to make my bag. So now I'm going to fold this over where the bottom lines up. And my zipper is not at the top. It's kind of down a little ways. That way, when I open my bag, my zipper is here instead of at the top. At this point, I don't need to trim this off yet, my zipper, but I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way down on this side. Take off your zipper foot and put your standard zigzag foot back on. So I'm just going to sew down this seam and you'll see most machines will easily go over the teeth of a plastic zipper. Before I sew this side, I need to open my zipper. So let's go inside and open the zipper. So after I've opened my zipper, I'm going to go ahead and clip that so that it doesn't move around and sew down the other side. So at this point, you can go ahead and trim off your zippers. And again, there's no problem cutting through that plastic teeth. Now I just have to sew the bottom. Again, make sure your zipper is open before you sew the bottom or there'll be no way to turn this inside out. So now we're gonna turn this inside out. So reach down in here and you're gonna open up your bag. I've got a cute little bag. The zipper will open and I've got some pretty decorative stitches on the back. This is a fun project that you can make any size, any width, and just have fun with it. So to put on a button, you need the buttonhole foot and the button you're going to use. And what you'll do is this opens in the back. We're going to place the button and that will determine the size of the buttonhole. We're going to attach it to the bar, which is right here. So now let's attach the button whole foot and we attach it right here with the bar. So let me raise my foot. You have to activate the lever for the buttonhole foot and that is right here. You bring it down behind this white lever. This will go between these two levers and that determines the size of your buttonhole. Now let's select which buttonhole we want to use. I'm going to use number 44. This also tells me to use my A foot, which is my buttonhole foot. Now let's sew out our buttonhole. Most machines will sew backwards, so be prepared for that. Lower the foot and press on the foot pedal. Now we have the perfect buttonhole based on the size of button we're going to use. This is called an automatic buttonhole foot and it works really great. Now we're going to put on our button using our button foot. For this stitch, some machines have a specific stitch to attach buttons. Otherwise, we're just going to use a zigzag stitch. So let's go all the way back to number eight and I will adjust the width after I put on my button. Snap-on feet are so easy to use, it is very simple to change out any foot you need. So I'm just going to slide my button in here. There's a tiny little bar. It goes right between the two openings. Now let's test the width of our stitch. You're going to hand turn your machine to make sure that needle doesn't hit the button before you step on the gas. Now let's sew it on. That's all there is to it to put on a button. Okay, so let's talk about some tools every sewist should 
have in their repertoire, okay? So the first thing let's talk about is ways to hold your fabrics together. I really like clips. Now, many um, people who do quilting are already very familiar with clips, but if you do sewing, you may not have ever used these before. Clips work great, and they're just to hold your fabric together. If you do need pens, I really like these. They're silicone tips, which means you can iron over them and it will not melt. Also, the grip, the grip on here is a little larger, so they're easier to grip, especially if you have nails. So I love these. My other favorite tool when it comes to holding things together is fabric glue. I'm a serger, I love to serge, and you can't really use pins with a serger. So fabric glue holds seams together. It is just a fabulous tool to have, is fabric glue. So marking your fabric is very important. We have a couple different types of marking tools. This one is a dual marking tool and it will disappear with either air or an iron or sometimes with water. So these are the different ways that you can mark your fabric for placement and then they will disappear. These are also friction pens, which I absolutely love. And it's good to have different colors because your fabrics are going to be different colors. So get a couple different marking pens for your projects. Every sewist needs a really good seam ripper. Regardless of how precise you are in sewing, there's always a seam that needs to be fixed. Um, the other thing you need to know about a seam ripper is they do get dull over time. So you do need to replace them. They don't last forever. And a good sharp seam ripper is your friend. When it comes to maintenance and taking care of your machine, if your machine didn't come with oil, this is specific sewing machine oil. So we carry a size like this, and we also carry a very small one like this. They have precision tips, and so it's very easy to oil the exact spot you need to oil on your machine. With maintenance and cleaning, definitely get a good synthetic brush. This is the one that I had demoed before. It has a nice synthetic brush, and that means it's not going to leave pieces in your machine while you clean your machine. So get a really nice synthetic brush and keep your machine clean and oiled. Let's talk about scissors. You need lots of different scissors for your projects. These are um, known as dressmaker scissors. They're the eight inch. These are um, the Ginger brand, but we do carry lots of other brands. You also definitely need some small little scissors for snipping your threads. I love these very sharp, small scissors. We also sell something like this. These are snips. And the way they work is they just hold on to your thumb and you can just snip. And it's great because you can use um, either hand and left or right, doesn't matter. So this is a really nice tool to have if you do not have one of these. We also have what's called serrated edge type scissors. These are really great. Um, they'll give your fabric a very precise cut and it has serrated edges, which helps with fraying. So another tool that is very helpful is cutting mats and rotary cutters. To use a cutting mat, they come in all different sizes. So you need the mat and you need a really great ruler. I like these that have the grip on the bottom so they don't slide around when you're holding them down. We carry all different size rotary cutters. This one's a 45, which is probably the most common and used for most of your projects. I also like the small one. This is a 28 millimeter and I love this for pattern work and things where I don't use a ruler. So having several different ones to use is really handy. And even if you're not a quilter, these are nice for all types of sewing. 
So the last thing I think every sewist should have is something to protect your machine and your furniture, and that is a mat. We have the mats in various sizes and colors. So these mats, like I said, really help protect your machine. It cuts down on vibration, and you can see that it's really nice. It also helps to protect your furniture. And a mat under any and all your machines is a great idea. So I hope you enjoyed this class today and learned just a little bit about your brand new sewing machine. Again, my name is Candace from Sewing Machines Plus, and we'll see you on our next lesson.